Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Melanie. I'm the director of Bird's Eye View. It's a charity that centers the perspectives of women non-binary filmmakers and advocates for gender equality and inclusivity in cinema. I'm also a very proud uh, exec producer of Rebel Dykes and I'm really, really thrilled to be joined by the Rebel Dykes team. Uh, we've got everyone here. We've got uh, Sean Williams, and Harry Shanahan, the directors. We've got Siobhan Fahe, the producer. We've got Elliot, the music supervisor and composer. And we've got Yvonne Taylor, who is a contributor to the film and club promoter. So thank you everybody for joining us. I'm really, really excited to dig into a conversation to find out more about Rebel Dykes such an important story. Thank you so much uh, for sharing it with us. Um, it's far too seldom that we get to see stories of lesbian and queer women joy uh, on screen. And yeah, um, congratulations. Uh, I know it's been a long journey uh, to get here and thank you uh, for sharing these stories with us. So I wanna start by asking how you all met and how this project came off the ground. And Siobhan, let's start with you, because you were there. I was indeed, I wasn't the only one here there. Elliot was there yeah, too, we you know, yeah. But yes, so back in the 1980s, when I was a young kid, just about 18, um, I ended up in London and I lived, was living in this really exciting life, um, living in squats and going to fetish clubs and going to parties all the time and really living this amazing life. We, all of us, I think, knew that there was something very special happening. That like this was the first time that queer women and dykes had been had been so powerful and and had such confidence and there was no shame and yeah it was a brilliant time and then the eighties finished and we all went off on our different lives you know some I became a nurse some people became artists or musicians and just went off on their lives and it was like it had never happened. Mm. There was no books, there was no TV programs, there was about other aspects of LGBT life, particularly gay men or, um, and, and then the riot girl thing happened. And of course, that was when people sort of say that sex positive feminism started. Mm. And it was like we hadn't existed. So I would occasionally say to friends, you know, why don't we do something? Why don't we do something? And nobody did. So eventually I thought I might as well do it. And so it started off as an oral history project. I took a tape recorder and went to London and collected all my friends and people I knew and asked them to come and tell me stories. Oh my God, those stories were amazing. They were much better than yeah, I remembered yeah. even. And they came with them bags and bags of flyers and leaflets, which I scanned. So we, I started off with this presentation. I talked to Brighton and London and Manchester and loads of people turned up. So I thought there's a real appetite for this. So. Me, I, I knew Sean because I'd been involved with Lady Fest and Sean was in a band, Vile Vile Creatures, that we put on with the slits at, at um, Lady Fest. So I said to Sean, because I knew Sean could hold a camera, Sean, can you film me and can you stick it on YouTube? <laughs> so Sean came along. And anyway, Sean, what did you say? Well, I was just blown away because this was like a whole history that I was I was already aware of and really into and also personally identified with. So I just felt like I'd just been given like gold in my hands basically. Um, and uh, me and Harry were in a band at the time and we'd been talking about wanting to make a film together. So I brought in Harry, who's also from the queer DIY music scene. Um, and it was basically just, this is the project and there's no way this is 10 minutes. This has to be a feature. Like we, we just wanted to do the story justice. Um, we didn't have any kind of grand ambitions that it would end up in a bloody cinema, like with everyone just seen it. Yeah. Um, so we weren't ambitious yeah. in that way, but more just, I don't know, just like super excited to just form this little trio and, you know, make this film. Yeah, that's what happened. So Sean knew about the, um, mostly about the photography side of it. And the music. And partly well. about the music side of it. So I was aware of some of the, the bands that had been around and, and was aware of sort of um, Dell's photography and stuff. And then when we started interviewing, there came all this other stuff. Um, and it just bloomed in our minds with this really exciting story. So we, we just filmed these really long interviews. Um, just trying to get as much information as possible and then just spent the next five years trying to piece it together <laughs> into a film you know? yeah yeah so maybe tell us more a bit more about how, how that kind of collaboration between the two of you worked I mean 
as I understand it, Sean, you worked more on the kind of archive and editing side of things. So what, Harry, where you came in was the kind of animation and the graphics. And there's a lot to this film and that's partly what makes it kind of so dynamic. Um, I mean, yeah. Tell us how yeah. it kind of came together as a collaboration between the two of you. Yeah, just to say like, like you. Sorry. <laughs> we, um, we co-directed it together over the whole length, whereas we divided it up as co-editors into sections. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of like the main strategy, but it was just reworking and reworking and contributing to each other's edits. Um, and also as the story, you know, developed and we, you know, re looked at the, the story arc, it was like looking at where there's gaps and absence and how we can address that. So we had two main strategies, which was Harry's amazing animation, which is out of this world. And, uh, <laughs> and we also used some recreation because there wasn't actually enough archive, particularly in terms of video. There's only like a handful of tapes. Um, there's lots of amazing, you know, flyers and photos, as Siobhan's just mentioned, coming from the Rebel Dyke community that, you know, the film wouldn't be the same without that. Um, but in terms of the video side, a lot of it is, you know, faked or, you know, we've had fun with it and done silly comedy sequences that you've just seen. <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of conversations about the story and Siobhan was very much is, is a creative producer and was kind of at the start kind of talking about the, the story arc and how are we going to create this. So we went through a few different arcs and I think th th where we kind of started to take off, I think, is when we kind of thought, hang on a minute, let's centre it around a, a place rather than around you know it, we knew that it was going to be from early 80s to very early 90s we knew that was the time period we knew the few topics and then we started to sort of center it around the chain reaction thing and build out from there and that for me just kind of made more sense that was kind of i made little films i went to film school but didn't really do anything with it after so i always had this idea of i want to make a film that doesn't have a narrator that has many points of view that's in this kind of really feminist kind of mode so that's what we were kind of but basically we went in we not only did we try and make a feature documentary having not made any films before but we also tried to do it in this really complicated <laughs> way it would have been much easier to just get someone to tell everybody what was going on but oh no we weren't going to do that were we but it was in the style of what the rebel dykes would have done themselves you know like yeah. just like they would get the roll of bin bags out to block out the light at chain reaction we were doing the same to like do the interviews yeah so it's yeah yeah we didn't really have any money so we yeah. just kind of did whatever we could think of really and, and eventually it happened but that's why it took ages for sure <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely like an incredible resourcefulness uh, behind uh, the film. There's sort of, re especially I love like the recreation of the, you know, the BBC scenes, like the Sue Lawley thing, things like that. But yeah. Um, and yeah, and of course it's much bigger collaboration. Music is a big part of, uh, of the film and of the story. And so Elliot, I wonder, you know, at what point you, uh, kind of joined the team and I know that we we see you ever so briefly in the film also so you're you're also in it um but yeah I wondered if you could tell us Elliot your approach to telling the stories through the music that you selected. I, I, I got involved pretty early on and my job in the beginning mainly was to dig around and find old cassettes of bands that ones that I knew that existed and ones that I didn't even remember existed <laughs> and um, asking friends and friends of friends and passing the word around that we were looking for songs and bands of that era and that mostly were never uh, released in any shape or form so some of them were actually recorded with a boombox in a in a kitchen <laughs> And some of them were in from rehearsal rooms and some of them were actually recorded uh, in proper studios, but, you know, never released. So I just gathered all the stuff and a lot of it I mastered in my studio right here um, from old cassettes that were sent all over the world and um, just trying to find the best songs and sending them to Sean and Harry and just, you know, trying to sort of piece together the best sort of mosaic of the era, you know, and as it progressed, like the 90s and um, especially around um, Yvonne's, uh, what Yvonne was talking about in the film later on um, when I was composing it, 
uh, putting in, in the, you know, early house music and so on. And so it just progressed. You did a great job mastering all that stuff and kind of composing yeah. where there was gaps where we didn't have any music that we had permission to use. And I was like, but we need some house, but we need some this, but we need some that, yeah. but now we need some yeah, spy yeah. music. And now it was like, what, like this? And we were like yeah. sending, it's like just oh, the versatility that you had to had yeah. to show to get all the incidental music as well as find all the recorded music. I just, just wanted to take my hat off to you, really. Yeah. Might not be the time. And the bands are so good. I mean, they're so lost. Yeah. and good. But some of them really pop, don't they? And, oh, you yeah. know, I, I love hearing them again. And it was great doing the research and listening to these bands and digging them up. And, and yeah, right until like the last few weeks of, of the filmmaking, um, Elliot was still adding music that knew from cassettes, as you remember, Elliot. Yeah, yeah. Good yeah. so that, I mean, that was the whole stage of finding the, the, the music of, of the era and um, obviously trying to find as many bands that never got their proper, you know, <laughs> do that nobody heard. Um, and then the original music, I sort of wanted to incorporate my memories of, of the time and the music that we had in Chain Reaction, which was a really, really brilliant mixture of early house and some hip hop and some new wave and some punk, like it was all mixed together. So I tried to do that with the original music and um, then we'd send it off to Sean and Harry and we'd sit for days. I mean, it was um, COVID time and it was really lovely to just sit in the studio all day the the longest zooms ever and just work with them yeah we spent i think you and me spent six hours on, on zoom one day didn't we just like yeah. placing all of the music making sure that i had it in the right place for what you'd composed and yeah i'm sure there are easier ways to do it but we had, <laughs> we had, that was fun that was, really really nicer, <laughs> though. that was really good fun yeah. yeah yeah and i mean in a way i was composing my memories and I think this is one of the greatest things that can ever happen to a musician that you get a chance to compose music to your memories like 30, 30 oh. something years oh, later. Yeah. It's a real yeah. gift. I'm so, really grateful for that. Gift, gift, gift to us telling the story as well that we have. Oh no, hang on a minute, that didn't sound like that. And while we're at it, that pub was way darker. And so Elliot would like give us quite a lot of like accuracy info as we were going through, and that was helpful. And we also had the research group um, on Facebook that, that like hundred odd people that were just able to like help us identify who's in this photo, what's in this, what, what where's this flyer from, yeah. how would you spell this, and people would come back and give you information and that was really really helpful so without those 100 people in the background just like messaging us on Facebook I think they've got to get their dues as well to be yeah, honest but also just personally just to shout out how important Elliot is in like the history of like queer <laughs> music and like how much yeah. of a hero you are and Debbie was to me already so it's just like one of the amazing consequences of making this film is like you're my mates now <laughs> it's like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there is something so it's it just feels so kind of fitting and in keeping with the project that you've made that the that it's so clear how collaborative uh this uh process was. Um and Yvonne, so you know, Elliot's been talking about kind of composing uh their memories, and this must, you know, watching the film uh now must bring back memories. Uh, for you, yeah. you were there. Tell us, yeah. It definitely brings back awesome. memories. Um, I want to say well done, Elliot, because it was a trip down memory lane with the soundtrack and stuff, and seeing some of those bands and hearing some of those names popping up. I mean, from my perspective, I arrived. Yeah, I arrived when I was about twenty-four, so I got here in about nineteen eighty-four. And for me, it was like, you know, I've always love music for me music does map out your life it, it it's that you know it's that thing that you're always going to go back and remember good or bad but you, it's going to remind you of something and so i dj throughout this period and that's how i kind of became involved with rebel diets because you know they were kind of like open to alternative types of music and um you know allowed me to kind of experiment at times in their house their squat parties or you know some event they were having at the oval theatre or something and so and I was able to play a whole array of different types of music which 
mostly on the sort of like um, lesbian dark scene. It was kind of like one dimensional. Uh, if you listen to one kind of music, it, that was that was all you were going to get all night. So for me, it was kind of they allowed me the process to develop my DJing skills without having to compromise my you know, my the sort of music that I wanted to hear. So whether that was new wave reggae, the you know the forerunners of house hip hop, and of course when I running my own club, they would they would they were there regularly every month, you know, in the front, you know, proper shocking out to to the different types of music, and I think. I will always have a fond memory of, of the 80s, early 90s, because, yeah, change, life-changing time for a lot of us. Um, and, yeah, there were certainly definitely tunes from some of those bands that were like, yeah, brought up some very interesting memories. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I, thanks for inviting me to partake in it, because it was if they just giving the opportunity to relive you know, to go back to those times, which actually, as difficult as they were, you know, there was a kind of a real strong sense of community, um, particularly as a, as a, a woman of colour. You know, it, I, it, it, I, it, I, I felt supported on my journey. Um, and, uh, yeah, thanks for that. But, you know, it, yeah, it, it, and I think it's, it, for me, it's been a, a bit of a bugbear that we need to share this history, musical stuff. I mean, when, you know, we sort of, listen to the music now you kind of go yeah there's some sort of you know reliving of the past but not not a knowledge of the past if you like just so uh, yeah i'm glad to have seen that so many people are coming to watch the the documentary and get an understanding of you know what came before and you know where you are now and how those things are connected yeah well, thank yeah thank you for sharing these stories and kind of building this community you know it's been such a um, this, you know, I know that this project's been many years in the making, and I feel like you've one of the many things that this project's done really well is to build a community along the way. Yeah. Um, you know, you've really kind of brought uh, an audience with you already, um, and built a, like, an incredible anticipation uh, for this film. And I wonder, you know, now that it's finally finished and it's you know it's gone from festival to festival to festival uh and now it's you know your uh uk theatrical release and i i know that some of the um you know some of the festivals and so on have been online but whether online or in cinema i just want to know what it feels like to be finally bringing that community together uh to watch uh this finished film yeah, how's it feeling? <laughs> yeah. Great. I mean, yeah. It feels pretty amazing, especially like hearing kind of the reactions of like the different generations and, and how they respond to the film. Like we've had really young queers like in tears, like being like, oh my God, this I didn't know anything about this. And I've just found like this whole path that connects me back, you know. Um, and that's kind of like how we felt being in the middle kind of generation. So I feel like we've like, you know, by making this, we've kind of opened that gate at least to help um and I don't know maybe the others could talk about like how how it feels for them to see it back from the that side I don't know and of course Siobhan's particularly Siobhan with the Revel Dykes history kind of doing all these events around which started off as a kind of necessity we had to raise some money so Siobhan did what Siobhan does which is through events and parties you know to try and raise interest and raise the profile you know so in the way we were kind of advertising a film that hadn't been made yet but we kind of had to do that to get the kickstarters going but then that kind of turned into a whole thing I think Siobhan to talk about it but it turned into this whole kind of community thing and uh, it's t it, it, it's changed my life for sure yeah, yeah i mean it's been wonderful bringing people together i love this sort of cross-generational mm. stuff that's been happening you know we had an exhibition in london and there were like 20 year olds and 70 year olds chatting <laughs> away and that is really really beautiful yeah. um yeah i mean I'm, I'm hoping it's a film that a film that people will want to go back to and watch again and watch with different communities and 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 I love the way it, talking about memories, Elliot. And so at the beginning of the, the process, I sort of pour, poured out as many poorly remembered memories as I could <laughs> to, to, to Harry and Sean to, to help them with the aesthetic, really, to start to get going and stuff. But when um, artists like Sean and Harry take your memories and then recreate them mm. in animation and, and uh, it's been a beautiful process. 
it's like better than I remember, if you know what I mean. It's 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 crisper and more interesting. And yeah, it's that it's been a joy, joy working with Sean and Harry and watching what they've done with it all. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Well, congratulations to all of you. Um, and I guess just to say that everybody can follow Rebel Dykes on all the social media platforms uh, and. There's a web page on uh, Bohemia's website to find out uh, where it's screening uh, online uh, as well as in cinemas around the UK. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching the film. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you all enjoyed it. Lovely. Bye.